Hey everybody, I'm Kara and I talk to wine. Welcome to the latest episode where we are going to be talking about Chardonnay. Chardonnay can be polarizing, it can be, you know, a love-hate relationship with some people, but I love Chardonnay, number one. Let's get that out of the way. Number two, a lot of people ask me all the time, you know, what Chardonnay should I grab that's under 15 bucks? Like they're not looking to break the bank. Say they're shopping on a random Thursday at Trader Joe's, Target, Walmart, any just regular old grocery store, and they want to grab a bottle. They don't need the fluff. They don't need pretension. They just want to know what a good Chardonnay is under 15 bucks. So that's what we're here to do today. We're gonna talk about three Chardonnays that I found are very easily accessible and we're gonna compare them. And I will give you my best opinion on what to buy next time you're looking for just a Chardonnay under 15 bucks that uh, you can pick up at any old uh, store that you do your shopping. So to make it fair for you know the wines I've chosen, I'm gonna do them blind. So I'm not gonna have any preconceived notions of what I'm tasting or whatnot. So I've had a friend blind bag these, change up the order. But the three wines, I don't know which ones they are, we're gonna try are Kendall Jackson Chardonnay, Hess Chardonnay, and Joel Gott. So those are three that I found are just easy to find. Let's dive in. So I'm gonna just be taking a holistic view at the wine and trying to find the best quality out of these three. Let's leave, let's leave the pretension at the door, right? You just want a good glass of wine. So, number one, Chardonnay number one, visually nice yellow, pretty run of the mill. Aromatics, right? Let's check out the aromatics. Okay, there's some good apple, there's some good pear here. There's a little bit of a savory quality to the wine. Some nice toasted hazelnut. I'm actually finding a good bit of complexity here for the price point. You know, you usually don't expect to find too much complexity at this price point, but there's an, uh, a floral note, there's a honeysuckle, there's a honeyed nature. So pretty good amount going on on the nose. Let's taste it. Okay. It's got some good umph to it. It's it's dry, right? So we're not worried about too much, you know, sugar, not overly sugary. Good bit of brightness. There's some there's some texture here. There's a smoothness to the wine. The flavors are coming through that we smelled on the nose. And it's not it's not, you know, the longest lasting finish in the world, but it stayed with me for a little bit. Solid wine. I, I'm happy with this. Whatever you are, you're pretty good. I would drink that again. I just did. All right, wine number two. And then of course I will, you know, compare in my head and choose the right wine that I'm going to recommend you to buy. But let's keep journeying on here. Chardonnay, Chardonnay, Chardonnay. Maybe a little bit deeper color here, a little bit deeper yellow. Oh, interesting. Not quite as much going on aromatically as number one here. Bit more toasty, a little toastier. Not quite as much pretty fruit, really more focused on that toast. There's a pungent note here light bit of a smoky, smoky feel here. I'm not in love with the nose on this wine because it just what there wasn't much going on. But the palette's a bit a bit nicer. It's it's more bold than number one. There's a boldness. I can feel a little more heat of the alcohol. I would guess this has a, a touch more alcohol on it. This one is more rounded. It's more powerful. But once again, 
a lot of the subtle nuances that I appreciated in number one were overtaken by the rich robustness of number two. So splitting hairs here, but you know, just to, to recap, still dry, not quite as much bright acid or that mouthwatering component. And it finishes a little hot, finishes a little warm. And I, I almost feel like number two is trying a little bit too hard. But I mean, what are you gonna do? I mean, trying to get people to enjoy wine. All right, number three, and then we will round third and choose the wine, figure out what they are, right? And then um, talk about who won, right? So number three, do, 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 do. Chardonnay number three. Possibly the lightest color here, light yellow. Ooh, interesting. Once again, totally different aromatically. There's a sharper uh, nature to this one. It's a more citrus, more uh, lean smelling in, in the sense where there's, there's a more um, bright, restraint, uh, citrus, faint white flowers. More stoniness, kind of more of that mineral, mineral feel here. Let's give it a sip. Okay. Let's hit our boxes again, right? It's dry, so none of these wines are sweet. So don't worry about that when you're when you're looking to grab a bottle of any of these. This one has the most spark to it. There's there's a lot of sharpness on this one, so very, very mouth-watering. I would say out of the three, number three has the most pop to it. It, it feels a little bit un-Chardonnay-y in a weird way, not, in a, not necessarily in a good way to me. I, I'm not getting a lot of the, the notes and, and the, the textures and the identifiers that I typically like with Chardonnay on this one. This one is more, to me, reminiscent of a Sauvignon Blanc. Part of me thinks, well, if I want a Sauvignon Blanc, I would just get a Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, as mentioned, a little bit on the more lean side, and there's a slight bitterness here that I'm not necessarily in love with. All right, so the pros and the cons of all, you now kind of understand the process of how I, I go about and, and figure out what I like in a wine. And let's take one more sip of each and then reveal well, I'll tell you which one to choose first, still unbiased, and then we'll reveal who won, right? Okay. All right, number one again. Yeah. Man, this is a hard job, I tell you what. All right, so now just going bang, bang, bang across the board here. This is hard, but I'm gonna go with Chardonnay number one, whatever that may be. I like that it is the most representative of Chardonnay. I feel like it has just enough of the, the roundness, the suppleness, the fruits I wanted those slight toasty notes, there's a savory component while still maintaining a brightness. I would say this Chardonnay punches a bit out of its weight class. I would recommend this if you just want a nice, easy drinking, affordable Chardonnay. Let's see who won out of those three. Who's the winner? All right, unwrap the present here. Oh, we have Hess. Hess has won the prize of the day. So, Hess, good for you. Congratulations. I will, I'll have another little sip of that. All right, let's see who I, so between these two, I would say second and third. Interesting how it went in that order. But um, wine that got second place is Kendall Jackson. And these are both 2018s. And last but not least, I'm so sorry. Thank you for competing. Thank you for playing. 
Joe got 2018 again with third place. Um, but hey, best part about this is try, see what your palette likes, right? Mine happens to enjoy the harmony and the balance of number one, but your palette's gonna be different. Just a suggestion, have fun out there. Don't be afraid to try and explore different wines. Don't be snobby, keep following me. Uh, let's learn about wine, let's keep talking. Subscribe, definitely subscribe because there's more fun videos to come. A uh, little teaser, let's just say we'll be talking about Cabernet Sauvignon next week and some wines I would recommend for you. Uh, also stay tuned, we're getting dangerously close to a book release. So I will keep the news coming on that, but September is a very important month for me and my book, If Wine Could Talk. But anyway, cheers. I'll see you next time.